You said to write about what disturbs me, particularly if it bothers no one else. I'd like to write something from the point of view of the help. I want to interview you. No maid is ever going to tell you the truth. That's a hell of a risk to take in Jackson, Mississippi. First, I think it would be helpful just to hear a little bit about um, how you and Kitty came to have this incredible uh, partnership and commitment to getting this movie made, and how in the face of uh, people saying this is crazy, you can't do this, you you know, you know, kept that bond with one another. 9-11 happened, and we were talking. We, we shared an old apartment in this village, and she was there, and she just started talking about how homesick she was and how how um, how at a loss for words and emotions that she was. And she said, I, I miss Dimitri. And I said, I miss Carol. And the, I have Carol in my life. That's the one that raised me. And so you know, Catherine, that day, began the five-year process of writing the book. And she finally sent it to me, and I was just blown away. You think you know your best friend. And then you read something like this that came from them. I don't know if anybody's ever had that experience when a friend surprises you and I was blown away. And I, I said, Catherine, I have to make this into a movie. And we had a, a very common thing in our life, which was we understood from our, each of our own sides servitude and what it meant and what it meant to me. And I saw it from the prospects of the love. Because the woman that helped raise me made me the man I am today. And Viola brought the other aspect of what happened, which was that her mother and her grandmother worked on a plantation, and so she came from the place of the loss. You see the loss, you see the struggle, you see the pain that that she, and I don't think anybody else could have done what Bella did. I mean, you stare into her eyes and you see all of that in her body and in her soul. This is about hope and courage and strength and looking to the future, and it just didn't work, and we did. I mean, and Stacy's being modest, we really worked a lot and tried a bunch of different things, and in the end it came down to no one had ever asked her. No one had ever asked her what it felt like to be, to be me. What is it? It's a horse they find wandering about in no man's land. What kind of an horse? A miraculous kind of an horse, be my guess. What was your first day like on the set? What, what was the first uh, thing you shot and how nervous were you? I really did have to learn screen acting from scratch, you know, I mean, and Steven Spielberg, as well as having to be the director, was also kind of my, my teacher, and my, you know, who, who better to have as your, your teacher. But, um, I, you know, I, I remember, you know, specifically not feeling nervous on the first day and kind of going, well, why not? And it's because Stephen just, one of his greatest skills, I think, as a director is making you feel incredibly comfortable and, you know, on the back of his chair, he doesn't have director, he's got dad written on it and, it, and, that. and it's, it's kind of a family, you know, it's just a lovely atmosphere to work. Back home in England, it's, it's really becoming part of our culture, you know, the book is something that most kids have read. I was read it when I was about eight or nine by my parents. Um, you know, and it's, I think there's something here that we, we can all relate to, you know, especially with you know, the story of my character in this horse, you know, we've, we've all had that relationship with, uh, you know, be it an animal when you're younger or a best friend, brother or sister, and we can all sort of imagine what that's like to have that torn away from you. Mm -hmm. For Albert, the, the horse is, is his brother, you know, he's the lonely only child, and when the horse comes into his life, it becomes his brother. So, for me, I've got two young brothers, and, and that, was, that, was, that was where the stakes were in the scene. So, I, you know, I run up and, you know, it's kind of this, there's so much going on you can't even get the words out. And then, you know, Stephen takes you to one side, he goes, look, just keep all that, but throughout the scene, suppress it. And it's all about getting into Pete Mullen's eyes. It's all about getting your point across.